It's time for lunch and whatnot. Let's get to the what we we're gonna call the main course, right? Not um, the salmon. Where do you have that? Yeah, after the salmon. Oh. The whatnot part. Okay. Um, where we, uh, you know, try to just kind of dig into some questions. We we like to put some feelers out there before the show, um, and we put some feelers out. Asked, you know, what you guys want to talk about. Um, the you know questions you have, and you know some of the things we saw in those questions were a lot of them were related to time. Yes. The subject of time. So the theme of today's show, um, the main course, is going to be about time. I don't know if you guys have a couple of questions you want to throw to us around yes. that subject. We can go to our producer, see if Lindsay has a question for us. <coughs> All right, question number one. Can you talk about how time and the value you place on time <clears throat> has influenced symmetry and quality? Okay. Can you talk about how time and the value you place on time has influenced... That was a really good question. We'll be glad to answer that. How did time come about? Um, you know, what was what were we thinking about with time when it came to developing symmetry in the systems and and quality, right? Yeah. So let's get into some of that. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I, I think when when most people are starting a business or they're entering a career, the obvious focus is um, money and yep. how can I make more money? And if you talk to most business owners. Um, they'll tell you that there's a lot more importance around the time aspect. And just kind of thinking about last night, and it's it's really kind of sad to think of it this way, but what is the most important thing that people want? Well, if, you, if you're sick, you want more time, yep. right? Um, what, what, can, what, is, what do we take away from people if they do something really bad? What's the ultimate punishment? You go to jail. You go to jail. Yep. You lose time, right? And so... When we were wanting to start the company, um, we knew that what we wanted was what probably what most people wanted. That's right. And it's a combination of both of those things. Yep. But we all know people that uh, have great jobs and, and make a ton of money, and they just seem miserable. Uh, yep. They don't have much time to enjoy it. Yeah, that was it. And that's, in a way, kind of you know what, what sparked us to start this company. And so it, it is a it is an important subject. I think it's a good one to start with. Um, you know, when we started this company, we we really took kind of a big step back. Um, Stephen Covey has a good quote, um, something to the nature of "Begin with the end in mind." And I think that's such a healthy kind of question for everyone to to ask themselves before they get into something around work. Mm -hmm. And we did that. You know, we, we sat down and we said, what is the end result we're really trying to go for? And let's start with that and then work backwards. Too many times I think people kind of go down the road thinking they know what the end result is that they're going for and not really realizing that's not really in the end what's going to create a certain level of happiness and fulfillment and contentment. And so they start chasing the wrong things. And for us, it was like, let's establish the end first. The end, like Brandon said for us, was we wanted to make money, but we also didn't want to trade that money all the time for time. We didn't want to always trade our time for money. We wanted a healthy balance of money and time. Yep. And that's a big and, right? Absolutely. Because what most people do, because they don't understand how money works as they start trading money for time. And if you're always trading one for the other, how do you ever really kind of get both? Mm -hmm. And like you said, we just kind of took a hunch with symmetry and said, chances are if money and time from a very broad sense is what we're driving for when we get up and we go to work every day, chances are it's probably what most people want too, mm -hmm. or at least the majority. If they, if they would be educated to know that that's even a possibility, and that's part that's of the, the biggest problem. That's the tricky part, right? right? And so um, that, you know, there's there's been a couple books, I think, that have shaped certainly my outlook on work and money, um, and and I think for, for both of us have shaped really the company. One of those books was an educational book around money and time. And... Uh, and I think we have a graphic. I want to show it in a second, but it's um, it's really around Kiyosaki's book, um, Cash Flow Quadrant. That that book, and there was a few others. I think when we we probably read that book about the same time, 
completely shifted the way I thought about work mm-hmm. and what I was actually going for. Um, and I see heads nodding out there too. It, it's 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 probably a book that should be taught in school at some point. Absolutely. Um, how money works, the different types of money, how it's related to your time, how it's related to that that balance. And so <coughs> if we have that graphic, let's show it because I think it's important to well, kind of think, break it down. Yeah, let me say this too. You know, we actually used this as a big part of the way that we were, were building the company from an actual hands-on recruiting uh, standpoint. Yeah. Like every Friday, we would bring in new recruits to the home office. Uh, Edward Pritchett was one of those. Brian Delaney were one of those. Um, Matt and Brad Smith eventually were one of those as well, where not only would we break down um, the the business and how the business works, but we'd actually take 15 to 20 minutes to educate people on this, which is arguably the most important thing. And uh, maybe we should take a little responsibility that we, we maybe we haven't broken this down and talked about it quite enough, because I think everyone needs to not only understand this to determine where they're going and what they're, what they're looking to accomplish, but also how to teach it. Because yep. if you want to really explain symmetry, the value of symmetry, who yep. we are, what we it's actually do, it's important component. this is the most important part of it. Break this down. So the, the basics of it, um, and Kiyosaki, there's so many people that teach us really well, and if you have not read Cashflow Quadrant, I would highly recommend reading that book. Um, the fundamental difference in the left side of this quadrant and the right is the left side is linear income, or what we usually just refer to as temporary. The right side is leveraged and residual income, or another way to say it is permanent. So Brandon, if the left side is temporary and the right side is permanent, um, and you had the choice, which would you choose every single time? Every would single you rather time. earn your money in a temporary fashion, meaning if I do something once, I get paid once, or in a permanent fashion where I do something once and I continue to generate income from that? Which would you choose? You're always gonna choose the right Which side. would you guys choose? Like, if you poll, probably not 100% of the audience is going to say, I want, I would rather have my income earned on the right side. And the question I would have is, why is it that 98% uh, of the country earns pretty much 100% of their income on the left? And there's a lot of reasons why, and we don't want to get into it today, but uh, I think education, we talked about that, is certainly one of them. I, I've read this book. I, didn't, I, I was never shown this in school where money come from and what different types of money, right? Um, so I think education is certainly a big part of it, but there's certainly things also that keep people on, um, from moving over to the right side. Risk or perceived risk is one of them. Um, maybe investment, that kind of thing, to get to get to play on the right side. But again, left side is temporary, right side is permanent. Um, and so the beautiful part about symmetry and what we do is we all start on the... Uh, left side of the quadrant in this in the self-employed quadrant right and i can't think i'm not trying to uh, bash the s quadrant here because the s quadrant is our atm you know that's where we go out and we generate uh, the money that we need to potentially transfer into the right side of the business uh, the right side of that quadrant Um, and i can't think of a better self-employed uh, way to go out there and earn a living than to do what we do with our insurance products. Absolutely. I don't, I don't think we offer it enough times to uh, people that are maybe trying to bridge away from that the E quadrant, right, to get down right. to the S quadrant. So it's the perfect way to move from one to the other because I can do it part-time. I can get started if I need to, to replace twenty or $30,000 uh, of income. I can do that fairly simply in the self-employed quadrant. That would maybe give me enough confidence to, mm-hmm. to be able to take that that leap. That's right. But again, the fundamental difference on the right side is that it's permanent income. And the reason why it's permanent is because of leverage. And so there's two ways that you have leverage on the right side of the quadrant. As you can see on the business owner side, what you're leveraging is time. You're leveraging other people's time. On the investor side, you're leveraging your money. Your money is working for you. Okay. Uh, the business owner uh, side, when you think about that leverage, you know a lot of people will say, well, there's only 40 hours in a week. Mm-mm. If you're a business Mm-mm. owner and you have 10 people working with you and they're all putting in, let's call it eight, eight hours a day, mm-hmm. there's no longer just eight hours in a day. Mm-hmm. There's 80 hours in a day outside of my eight hours. The leverage is such an important component. Leverage is the way you move from temporary income to permanent income. 
okay? And so when we talk about symmetry and everything that we kind of do behind the scenes with symmetry, we always have this in mind because what we want for our people, again, is what we wanted, which was the ability for our income not to always be tied to our feet. So let's create an actual system that allows people to bridge from the left to the right. So a lot of times people say, well, what is symmetry? Is it an insurance agent? I, I think symmetry in its purest form is a business system. The product we sell is insurance, but symmetry is a system that you can leverage to cross. It should the next slide, if you will, because this kind of shows you. It's symmetry is really just a bridge that allows you to move from the left side of the quadrant to the right, if you want. If you want to stay in the self-employed quadrant, there's certainly ways you can earn a great income as an employee or as a self-employed person, Absolutely. invest the surplus into the I quadrant and move to the right. So totally fair game there too, but symmetry from an agent standpoint really is about showing you how to make a very good income in the S quadrant and then giving you a system to leverage. And again, on the left side, you said save yourself stress, time, energy, money. All of the things that go into hiring people and getting people to a point where they can sell insurance and earn a decent income, there's a lot that goes into that. Most of that's on the right side here. Yep. You have to have the main ingredients, first of all, and the first few things are the main ingredients. We talk about the Pareto principle, right? 80-20. 20% of my activity is going to produce 80% of the results in my bank account. So the first thing we did when we started Symmetry is we said, what are the 20%, what's the 20% for us? What is it that we're doing with that 20% of our time that's actually producing 80% of our income? And it was sitting in front of clients and it was recruiting. Those were the two main activities. Mm -hmm. And so there's certain ingredients that are involved to make sure that you guys can do that most of the time. We just said, we want to flip the equation. Instead of you spending 20% or 20% yeah, of your time on the 80% of the result stuff, let's get it to the point where you can spend most of your time, if not all of your time, on that high net worth activity. And that's why you need, you gotta have, it's like baking a cake, right? Yep. If you're gonna go out and sell a lot of insurance, you need some of the basics. You need top rated carriers, and you need a, a, a bunch of them. You can't just have one or two. I can't sit in front of a client and uh, and say I have the best thing for them when I'm only selling one or two companies. I, I need I need a variety. I need some things. It can't be a one size fits all type thing. So we need access to top rated carriers and contracts, proprietary products within that. We need a, a bonus program. I need there's got to be a certain level of motivation when I hire an agent because if not, I've got to create some of that internal motivation. But since Symmetry comes in and says here's the bonus program. All of you guys get to leverage that. It doesn't cost you money, but that creates a lot of movement, right? Same thing with some of these other things. Um, passive income with QMS. Yeah, that's a big right? one. You know, so many of the things that, that we've tried to roll out with the evolution of your company have all centered around time and how to create time. So it's a simple question, right? If you could make systematized income of $50,000 by doing next to nothing, yep. or you could have to do everything to make a hundred thousand dollars, which would you choose? Some people say, I have more time. Mm -hmm. I like to work a lot. I want to do this to make all of it. I like to say, I, if it's systematized, I'll take half because that means it's duplicatable. Absolutely, and if it's duplicatable, yeah. give me a couple of months. And while you're working your butt off to make the hundred, I'll be yep. working on the systems to make 150. That's right. Incentive trips, conferences, training, um, culture and community you know think That's about yeah. think about you you know having that system to leverage around that and how hard that is to create and we know staring at some of you guys that helped us start the company it's incredibly hard to create a community and a culture that's actually attractive and when you're talking about leveraging other people's time and having a system to do that recruiting is just very simply an attraction right hiring is an attraction I need to attract people to me but also, more importantly, the, system, the, the company. And I, you know, I think that's sometimes overlooked as such an important part of the system is the culture and community aspect. What about when I onboard people, the ability to actually have a system, a universal system that gets them making money so that I'm not having to spend time each and every time with one of them 
training them on how to either sell a policy or more importantly, how to develop as a leader. That's, that's, that's some work. And that's, that's why you see impact, thrive, connect. That's a leadership, that's our leadership development platform that everyone gets to leverage to actually help you guys bring people up as leaders in the company, right? Now, the question I would have if I'm outside listening in is like, you know, well, that all sounds good, but is it working? Um, and we can confidently say it's working. Last Yesterday, we had our national call. We introduced four new agency owners. Yeah. So we introduced four just... If, if you don't know what agency owner is with us, that's 50000 a month at a minimum of, of, of production in the insurance space, which if you boil that down, it's probably around $50,000 of leveraged passive income annually at a very minimum. That's mm -hmm. what it takes to become an agency owner with us. So in 11 years, what we're seeing, I don't know how long it took us to even have 10 agency owners, but right now we're averaging three years, four years. every single week we promote a new agency owner in our company. Um, it's probably more like 1.3. Last month, uh, last month, not October, the month before that, I think it was eight or nine agency owners mm -hmm. that we promoted. This is a big month. And historically, when we look back at the growth trends also, the majority of our agency owners show year over year growth. So um, when we talk about symmetry being that bridge, it is that. And a lot of people are crossing that bridge. And as we evolve as a company, we're going to continue to lean in and invest in, in the system to make sure that that bridge is paved as smoothly as possible. And, you know, the end result being what we're all driving for, which is a balance yeah. of well, money and, and, and time yeah and symmetry is really when you when you really think about it not only is it in that b quadrant but it's also in the in the investor quadrant because yes you're a business owner but so many of them are investing back into things within symmetry yep. um and we always tell people uh because a lot of a lot of uh, agents and agency owners come in and they're making way more money than they, they ever thought possible yep. and so they start dabbling in kind of other things or investing in other things and and that's you can certainly do that you're going to be hard to find something that, that yields the return that yeah. investing in a symmetry, you know, kind of creating a base shop, creating a new yeah. agency owner, um, investing in your own business, uh, you're, you're not going to find anything Never that matches like it. Yeah. No. But um, congrats to all the new agency owners this past month. Yeah. You know, four, well, four brand new ones, all getting a taste of that passive income. And the, the goal is we want to show you that, but then we want you to leverage that system and show others how to do that. Um, and when you do that, then the return is also there. Absolutely. You know? I think there's there was another great question that we wanted to come back to yeah. on this too. Can I say it again? Yeah. On time? It was on I'm, time, yep. Yeah. I'm newer to the business, so I'm trying to divide my time between building an agency and being in the field. How did you guys manage your time when you were starting out? How do you manage your time better when you're, when you're kind of riding two horses? That's a tricky one, yeah. A little bit, right? You, you're in the field. Um, you're trying to build an agency, which takes a lot of coaching, mentoring, recruiting, yeah. training. You're in the field, which takes a lot of uh, dialing. You need to be booking appointments. You need to be sitting with clients. You need to make sure those clients are protected. Yep. Those policies are That's getting approved. And I think, you know, I'll, I'll start off by saying one of the things that we see probably too often is people pulling away from uh, their, what we kind of, refer to as your ATM to build your business, which is mm -hmm. being in the field, people pulling away from that uh, a little too quickly, right? They, they start making yep. um, a great income on the business side, you know, passive income from their agency, but uh, yeah. but they kind of stifle their growth because pulling out of the field a little too early means that I can't then reinvest in more infrastructure, yep. more staff, more yep. any of the things that are really going to help me leverage the system. Yep. So. That's Give, a good one. What's a good What's a good tip? Uh, um, I mean, I think it starts with your schedule, you know, and having a schedule. I struggle with that, you know, when I first got into this business because I was a plumber's assistant, <laughs> and I had a place to show up to every day. You know, it was nine to yeah. five, and um, crappy places to show up to. Every day. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of that too, for sure. Yeah. But you know, I just I, I'd never had uh, quote unquote freedom of schedule, and it was tricky for me. I remember my first week out. Um, I sat in front of a bunch of appointments and made twenty four hundred dollars, 
uh, and it was about maybe 20 hours worth of work. Made some phone calls, booked some appointments, went out, sat with the families, made 2,400 bucks. Yeah. You know, I was like, man, if I can do that every week, that's going to be 100 grand my first year. And second week, I went out, goose egg. <laughs> and I, if I really kind of think about it, it did you actually went, go out? And <laughs> probably not. Yeah. yeah, it was my schedule. You know, I said I was working, but I really wasn't. I wasn't used yeah. to kind of um, dis- that discipline for myself. Um, and I think a lot of I think a lot of agents struggle with that because you know you're in the S quadrant. You know, you're self-employed when you start here, and oh, if you yeah. don't have that ability to kind of discipline yourself then what's that saying? You, you live with the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Yeah. I live with the pain of regret that second week with a, with a zero. Um, thankfully, I kind of learned through, you know, mentors in the business, through books, like the importance of like, man, you don't wake up on a Monday morning and ask, what am I doing today? No, you don't, you don't wake up any day, you right? You don't wake up any morning not knowing what you're like, going to do. But, you know, there are certain uh, pieces of the business that have to be kind of sacred times, yep. right? Like nothing's going to get in the way of me reaching out and calling my leads, yep. you know, and if I'm going to put in uh, 250 to 500 dials, depending on how many leads I have, depending mm-hmm. on how many appointments I want to run, depending on how many people I want to help, yep. et cetera, then uh, I have to know very clearly when are my times that I'm making those dials, when are my times that I'm talking virtually to the clients to sell yep. them, when are my times that I'm going to be looking at my pending business, and this is assuming that it's all on me, mm-hmm. right? When am I going to be recruiting agents? When yep. am I going to be it's one of the most important out, things? Yeah. When am I going to be working on myself? And so mm-hmm. one of the things that we did early on is we would just take a uh, a calendar and it would say Sunday to, to Saturday. Yep. Uh, and we would highlight in exactly what times we're going to be doing what things. Yep. Non-negotiables, we started, yep. We had the non-negotiables like conference calls. We started with, I need to plug in to this weekly meeting. I need mm-hmm. to plug into this conference call or these conference calls. Those are highlighted in a certain color. Yep. I'm going to be making my dials at this time. Meredith and I would make our dials uh, every Saturday morning. Well, I would start Thursday night, and I would be running appointments Monday, Tuesdays when we were in the field. Yep. And then um, she and I were both in the office Saturday mornings, no matter what, from 9 o'clock to noon. Yep. And if I had to keep going past noon to get my 15 appointments, I had to keep going past noon to yep. get my 15 appointments. Right. But right. we weren't taking phone calls to do other things. We weren't. Yep. You know, it didn't matter where we were. If we were going to a wedding, if we were going to do something else, those were our times that we were making dials. And that's tricky, too. I remember hiring an agent very early on in this business. And he did fairly well, and then he would struggle for a little bit. And I remember talking to him one time, and I said, you know, I was trying to di- trying to diagnose what was going on. And um, I remember him telling me earlier that he never missed a day of work at his previous um, employer. He had never missed a day in like 10 years. Like perfect he worked tennis. like six days a week, like long hours, never mm. missed a day. And I remember going, take me back to that, mm-hmm. right? Like you never missed a day in 10 years, but you missed a week here because uh, I can't remember what the excuse was. It was a pretty good one, actually. Sure. And I was like, that's kind of understandable. Yeah. But nothing like that happened in the 10 years that you worked for that company and you never missed a day? You never had a sickness in the family that you had to kind of tend to? Like, he was like, man, I never thought about it like that. Yeah. Like, if you wouldn't do it at a job, then you can't do it here. Freedom is an earned thing. You have to put in the time. And what you'll learn is freedom is in the schedule. When you have a schedule and you stick to it and you put the things in there that are important to you as non-negotiables, not only the things that make you money, but the things that are important to you, then there is freedom in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we're, recru- we're, we're creating uh, routines. Yep. We as humans love routines, yep. which means that we're creating positive habits, which right. means that we can yield the same result yep. because we're going to have consistency in our performance week after week and really hour after hour. Right. I should know... Um, and the and the guys that are on the the call with us or on the webinar with us right now, I guarantee you, if you were to look at their calendars, they know exactly what's going on to the fifteen minutes to the fifteen minute mark, yeah. right? Um, and and the people that don't, you can always kind of tell what's going on because they seem to always be on a little bit of an emotional roller coaster, yeah. like hey, I got paid, and then oh no, I got charged back, hey, oh, I got paid. That's a, that's and that's the worst thing possible. Like you need. If you get consistency in performance, you'll have consistency in your emotional stability. Yep. And if you have, if you want to build a business, or even if you want to be a good salesperson, 
you better have consistency in your emotional stability. That's right. If you don't have that, it's gonna you're going to get no. It's not going to be fun. You know, you no. can make $100,000 a year and the emotional toll it can take on you because of the way you earn that 100,000 can be a nightmare. Mhm. I would rather earn 50 or 40 or whatever it is with some consistency than be on that roller coaster because what I noticed about my roller coaster journey when I first started when I was trying to manage that discipline was my emotions were attached to it. Yep. Right? And 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 it was a it was a vicious cycle because I would let my bank account dictate my activity level. Yep. And my and therefore it would kind of come back and that would affect my emotions and the problem with that is is when you're not feeling great, that's not when you want to go out and be trying to help people. Yeah, it's a vicious cycle. Like I'm a better salesperson when I have money in the bank and I have money in the bank because I'm consistent. So it just consistency breeds emotional intelligence or not emotional intelligence, emotional stability. Emotional stability gives you mm-hmm. more more sales, right? right? It's it's, it's a cycle. So um, I think another healthy habit that we did, uh, and we kind of talked about earlier with the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule, is just the exercise of thinking about what are the things that are important that you do that earn you the most amount of money? And what are all the other things that get in your way of doing just those activities? And I can remember sitting down with Sarah um, very early on and saying, okay, what am I really good at that actually makes us money? And again, for a lot of people listening in, it's probably sales. It's probably you know your ability to connect with people, get in front of people, relationships. Um, if you're building a business, it's it's recruiting, it's interviewing, it's leadership development. And how can we just get me to do that with all of my time? Mm-hmm. It's not that those other so we come maybe categorize them as administrative sometimes those things are just as important they have to get done your business will, will will wreck without them but is there a way that my spouse or the cash flow that i'm creating from being consistent i can actually bring an assistant in and bring a bring someone in to help me with those things to drive that hourly net worth up because i think about that a lot i think about man we all have the same amount of time in a day right mm-hmm. edward pritchett's got the same amount of time as the agent that was just hired you know, last week, what is Edward doing with his time? And most of it is like the time he's spending is on those high hourly net worth stuff. He's figured out how mm-hmm. to kind of ditch the rest of it yep. and, and delegate and get it off the plate. And that comes full circle back to your point about our philosophy and our style when we were building symmetry was to be very heavy in the field and pay for the system, pay for the 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 recruiting, you know, pay for an, a, a, a staff person to help us get interviews because the trick to time management too, when it comes to, especially when it comes to um, building a business, because building, you know, playing in that B quadrant is tough because when you really think about it, it's not instant. Absolutely, you know, yeah. you're, you're yeah. putting in work you're putting into in tomorrow. You have, it's to have a, a lot of faith. That it's, it's a faith happen, based right? work in that I'm, putting work in today that I don't really see the return for maybe 120 days out. And so what we had to learn to do was take that excess cash flow and kind of back ourselves into a corner um, in the way of like, man, I have an assistant now. And that assistant has a marketing budget of $1,500 a month. And that $1,500 a month is making the phone ring and making the emails light up for possible interviews. Now I have eight interviews scheduled you know, every single day, three yeah. days in a row. And it would have been easier for me just to go play golf or ride my bike. But, I, you know, we kind of call that stuff forced commitment. Yeah. You make the investment. You create some structure around it. Back yourself into a corner to make sure that you're spending a certain portion of your week working on the left side of that quadrant we just talked about. Yeah. Is that the, the left? No. Sorry, the right side of that quadrant. Because if you spend all your time working on the temporary, the left side of that quadrant, the income won't come on the right. You have to start putting in X amount of hours a week onto the right side of that quadrant, the permanent side. And if you do that long enough, pretty soon you'll be like some of these guys I'm looking at right here where now 100% of their income comes on that right side of that quadrant. But it's about it's about time management. Yeah, you know, I think of Marshall Whalen and, and you know, a lot of times I'll call Marshall and he's like out on his boat. Yep. And, you know, whether it be FaceTiming or I can hear him. Yep. And, He's done so much work on the front end to know that where his time is best spent right now yeah. is coaching, mentoring, building relationships. The beauty of it is 
You can do that on a boat, can't you, Marshall? You can do that anywhere you want to, buddy. It's not like you're out there having to, to book appointments. But I think I think where people kind of struggle with this is um, we've talked about pulling out of the field a little bit too early. Yeah. Um, or, you know, there's some pitfalls, right? They they maybe come off of what they were doing. They were doing $10,000 a week in production. Now they're doing $5,000 a week in, in production. They haven't taken the time to either a hire a staff person mm -hmm. or get you know create some infrastructure and some systems or even worse they hire staff people but they don't take the time to train them and yeah. get them good at what they're doing yep. right so if you don't have a staff person we always say that you are yeah. and the problem with that is that as salespeople we're usually not good at that kind of work and so what ends up happening is we're taking away from the profitable activities that you're talking about yep. we're doing things that we're not good at That's and right. that are also not making us money so stay in the field, write $10,000 a week yep. in production, hire two or three people, or if you have a spouse, get them in the business. That's a dangerous one for some people too, right? <laughs> yeah, um, they, hire someone that can do the things that you're not good at doing or that you don't want to do or that are not yielding the result that, that you mm -hmm. needed to yield, right? And then take Fair the time enough. to train those people to be you, to be better than you, and then you know, you can fund all of that yep. nowadays just by sitting in your house on Zoom meetings, helping clients. I don't know if it sounds profound to you guys or if it sounds fairly basic. It sounds kind of basic, but maybe, yeah. maybe you know, maybe it's not. And maybe we need to talk well, about it more because... I think it's basic in terms of, of <laughs> how we kind of teach with, with symmetry and how we teach the leadership. This part is not basic, even though it should be. It's, yeah. it's not basic because it hasn't been talk yeah so people don't really it starts with understanding this and then you can kind of build out all of your systems all of your yeah. processes around how do I uh, how do I get to where I'm really wanting to go That's and it. talk to your talk to your directs talk to your managers um, yeah. and they know how to do it stay in the arena is what I would say keep because the the, the easiest thing that you can do as a leader yeah. is not start doing a lot of different things. It's you do the things that we've talked about. You teach other people that you hire how to do certain things, that's and right. then you lead by example. Yep, that's it. That's it. You're making money. You're leading by example. Watch your people start trying to chase you if you're staying at ten thousand dollars a week in production, right? Yep, that's it. Or if you're recruiting twenty people a month. Yep. Right. That's Lots the best kind of, of leadership and, and teaching that you can do. It's it's so so true. And one last little thought on this too. Um, you know, time management is not. It's you know, when you think about how your brain um, goes about things, there's the logical side of time management. Then there's the emotional side that I think is often overlooked. Oh, that's a good point. And yeah. how important energy is and energy management is, which is why when Brandon was talking, when you were talking about, um, you know, making sure that you put things in your schedule that are non-negotiable that are for you. Yes. Like I, I'll go crazy if I don't get to ride my bike. Absolutely. Some people go crazy if they don't hit the gym or they, they go crazy if they don't get to do, you know, what it is that kind of fills their cup. And I think we live in a in a in a in a world where that's often um, just kind of under under respected, like the ability to recharge. Oh, absolutely. And there's it's, so many it's companies out upon, there. That, yeah. You know, it's frowned upon. The last it's company like, we, we work for. It, absolutely. Like, you get made you, fun of for taking a vacation. Well, the messaging for some reason now has to be how busy you are all the time yeah you know and I tell you this I see more relationships ruined yeah. I see more health situations declining yeah. because people feel like they have to be proving their worth every day by how busy they are yeah. like it shouldn't be about and you hear people all this all the time say well, well I'll, I'll never get out work I can outwork anybody that's great I think that's a great quality to have but if that's your philosophy yeah. for a couple of years in a row you know what that's going to create? You're going to get burned out pretty right. quick because you don't need to be the person that's always outworking everyone. You that's need right. to systematize things so that you can actually enjoy the fruits of, of, of your labor and what that work is actually going to create. So whenever I hear people you know, kind of talk about um, how busy they are, and it's usually not with symmetry, it's, yeah. it's friends or it's other people, yeah. I think there's value in being busy. We're all busy. There's there's good things, but what are you busy doing? Yep. Because you know what, you got to be intentional to work on your relationships. Yep. You know, if you want a healthy uh, marriage, then you should probably work on those things. And that doesn't just happen. 
right? If you want to be a good father, you got to schedule those things in because it doesn't just happen. If you want to be a healthy individual, Mm -hmm. emotionally, physically, you better schedule schedule those things in because they're not going to just happen. And then what will happen, what will happen if you're not intentional about all those things is you'll be very successfully financially. And then one day you'll look around and you got nobody to share it with, no family, no health. You haven't enjoyed it. What is that really worth? That's why you got to move from S to B to I, and that's what synergy <laughs> that's is. That's right. That's right. Yep. It's about protecting that. It's about protecting your time and your energy. Yep. You know, and um, man, how are you showing up for people? And in a people business like this, if there ever was a people business, we're in it, right? Yeah, that's right. But between the amount of people we sit in front of to help them with insurance, the amount of people we're, we're, we're bringing on board with this company, it is a people business. And you got to, energy management is probably as important as time management. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good stuff. Good Good breakdown. On time management. Oh, I think I grew up. Yeah. Let's talk about maybe why time has been such an important topic of surgery. Well, you know, I I grew up, um, thankfully, with my mother beating some things into my head. What is a flow hack? And what are you trying to accomplish with one of your hacks? Well, I like to uh, save time. I know you well enough, Flo, to know that it's not just about saving time. Well, I like to save money, too. There you go. Is that what you were wanting? We like like that combo. Time and... The perfect combo. That's good, Flo. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So... Let's do it. Let's do one. uh, Yeah, let's, let's, let's get into this. Our first hack... Um, or maybe should be what what you drinking there? What what you sipping on? Well, this is the peach tea, mm, mm. crystal light, country good, Wilers. Wilers. Whatever. <laughs> Wilers little, little powders, little powders, <laughs> and um, I've got some peach vodka. Oh. Mm-hmm. And That's I have introduced good, uh, some other people to the. Peach tea and peach vodka, and, what, and uh, what we call around here a flotini, mm-hmm. right? Oh, good flavors. All right. So, one of your favorite hacks is um, uh, we don't want to kind of give away the hack, but it kind of involves what you do with your leftovers mm. and it's a good one. Your hair. How are those two things coming together to create a flow hack? Well, I discovered. A good while ago, these little shower curtain, sh- I mean, shower caps, I okay. realized that it had pretty good elastic. And so I started putting it over a bowl or you know, I just thought it was real quick and real easy. It's pretty genius. I like it. <laughs> it's reusable. Because yeah. saran wrap is so annoying. I just got this little thing right over the plate. I didn't have to... Change it. I didn't have to change it into a gallon bag uh, type thing. Or... Well, you got to show it to us. Hold it up so we can see it. Now that's just paper towel. It's got a pretty plate. Oh, look at there. Oh, it yeah. is a pretty plate. Man, yeah. I mean, diamond money right there. Um, we'll have to get some more flow hacks. She's got, she, she's got a bank of them. Oh, she's got a whole bank of them. This started with, uh, you, you came over for dinner. I don't know, three or four weeks yeah. ago, and, and Flo was there. And we you know, going, man. as Flo is known to do, she had a few Flotinis. And <laughs> uh, we, we started grilling her on like time and money and Flo hacks. And man, she just started. She's got some good ones. She just started spitting them out. I know that some people are going to be concerned about the shower cap thing. I will say that she does not use the shower caps on her hair and then <laughs> use those again for the food. There comes a point where you can be too efficient. You can be too efficient, that's it. <laughs> but I remember her saying, oh yeah, you can get these, you can get 15 of these if you're lucky, usually 10 of these at the dollar store. For a dollar? For a dollar, you can get 10 of them. And that's a steal, I mean, it's a good, it's definitely a good deal. It's and great too, if you're lucky, is you annoying. can find 15. Who wants to use saran wrap? I don't know who invented that, but I want to punch them every time. I'm... Well, not just the saran wrap, the, the box that it comes in and how yeah, you, you tear gotta, it. Oh, you always break the end of the box and you have to tear the stuff off. But a shower cap, it's so easy. It's genius. You know what else is Thank genius? Us later, guys. Uh, you know what else is genius Thanks about a, about a shower cap is it? And I don't think we talked about this on the hack. You can actually see the leftover. That was an important component. 
yes. float explains that too, which is yes. such a pain to go to your fridge and not know what's under that leftover that you had the night before, the night before that. I don't know what's in there. It's a mystery. I don't, know. I don't yeah. want to get it out and open it up and be like, no, I didn't there. want that. Maybe it's been there for a few weeks. I was weeks. looking for the pizza. Yeah. With a shower cap, you see what's in there. There's the pizza right there. I can see that. Flow. Oh, that's great. So good. Flow. We're going to bring more flow hacks, hopefully.